All right, so I previously did a video about the YouTube video editor. Well, they've been gradually adding features to it. So in this video, I wanna show you how to use the YouTube video editor in 2019. YouTube Simplify. Hi, and welcome to Creator Fundamentals. My name is Dan Courier, and I am here to help you deliver your value through online video. And if you would like to receive future notifications that can help you deliver your value through online video, make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Well, as I mentioned in the previous video, I did that back in 2018. Uh, as YouTube is moving into YouTube Studio, they're gradually adding features. They originally gave us kind of a bare bones version of the YouTube Studio Editor. It didn't have a bunch of bells and whistles, but they slowly have been adding features over time. There's a couple new ones in there. I know many of you have asked me about certain features, so be sure to stick around to the end of this video to see if your features have been added. All right, so we're gonna jump on the computer now and take a look at the specific features that were added and make sure you know where everything is and how to use it. All right, so the first thing we have to do is get to the editor. So if you are on your uh, YouTube channel, you can go to YouTube Studio Beta, uh, which you can see right here. You can also click in the upper right hand corner and go to YouTube Studio Beta here. Uh, if you happen to find yourself in the old version of YouTube, that looks a little something like this, uh, you are going to want to first go into Creator Studio which could possibly bring you to the classic creator studio, which looks like this, in which case you would push the try studio beta. In any event, you have any one of those three options. It's going to bring you to the back of your channel here. And uh, this is the studio beta. Uh, now, in order to use the editor, you need to go into a particular video. So we are going to grab a video. I'm going to grab one of my live streams just to use as our example. And then we'll dig into the different features that are available. All right. So if we go to the particular video, this is where the option to use the editor is going to show up. Uh, so you see over here on the left hand side, we have uh, details, analytics, and then editor. We're going to go ahead and click on editor. And that will bring us into the actual editing screen. Uh, as you can see, this is what it looks like right off the bat. It loads your video across the bottom. Uh, you have a couple different options down here. We're going to go through each of these and explain what they do, uh, just to give you a general sense of how this entire process works. And I want to see, maybe we can do, give ourselves a little more room here. All right, so we'll go, uh, we'll go maybe right here. And then we can just scroll down and look at everything. All right, so here is the display. You're not really gonna touch anything on the menu side over here. Once you're in the video, this is where you're gonna do all the work. So one of the common things that you can use this for, obviously, is trimming a video, especially for live streams. Uh, you have the ability to trim off, uh, you know, the beginning if you're, you know, you have like a lead in on your live stream. In my case, um, since I go live a little bit early, uh, you'll see that at some point in this process um, is actually when uh, it actually takes off. So you see that started there, but back here, we just have uh, a bunch of, of dead air. So the first thing we want to do is maybe clean up the front of this. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can use this trim feature. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. First of all, obviously, you click on trim. Now, if you're at the beginning or end of the video, you have this little blue bar, and you can simply, you can simply mouse over it so it changed to these double arrows, and you can drag from the front or back and cut all that out. Now, a little, little bit different, uh, uh, maybe counterintuitive, uh, the way this particular editor works. It's not like you highlight it and then you hit a button that cuts it out. You basically highlight it, it turns all these different areas uh, a darker shade, and then uh, you, when you are finally done, you go into preview, and it just is going to process in the background and take them out. So there's nothing that trims it down while you're looking at it. It'll actually process uh, after you save it. 
and then once it's ready, it'll pop up and replace the previous version without any interruption to your viewer. So, uh, so that's how you do it at the front. Same thing at the end. You would highlight over it and you can drag it. We don't want to chop off the end in this case. Now, if you have something that you want to clean up in the middle of the video, you need to first go to that area of the video. You have this little indicator up here that shows where you're at. And then when you find a space that you want to do something with, you click split. And that's going to give you another one of these bars, just like you had at the beginning or end of the video. And depending on whether you drag it left or right, you're going to chop that portion. Now, again, when you first look at this, you see the little X up here and you think, oh, okay, I've highlighted this. I'm going to click the X and that's going to remove that. No. But if you do click that, it actually takes out the cut. Uh, which absolutely does nothing. So you want to make sure you click the split, you get the line, and then you can drag that line in either direction to remove the stuff that you actually want to remove. And then uh, one of the questions I get all the time is, hey, I can't edit, or hey, I can't uh, save it, because as you can see right now, the save button is grayed out because we're still in edit mode. Once you've made a change, you click on preview, and that'll allow you to come up and watch the video with these thing with these particular cuts removed. And now you'll see that the save button is blue and you can actually click on that in the upper right hand corner. So uh, that is how that works. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is the add music functionality or add audio. And you'll notice that I switched to a different video. Uh, what I found when I tried to use this particular functionality for the live stream is it didn't seem to function quite the way you would want it to, given the fact that you're dealing with, you know, five minute clips of music on a live stream stream that was an hour and a half long. So uh, there's some certain features that ha that appear uh, on a more reasonably length video, and I wanted to show you those accurately. So I switched to this shorter video so we can take a look at how this works. But if we come in here, uh, it brings you to this different screen, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what happens here. So um, this is a good thing, especially if you happen to run into a situation where you get a notice that you have copy a, a section of your uh, video was claimed due to copyright and it's a legitimate claim and you need to remove it. This would allow you to come in here and select a track and overwrite that particular track uh, with the, uh, the music that's provided. Now, as you can see, this represents the entire length. You can resize this. Uh, to the actual space that you want it to uh, exist, and then you can actually go in and uh, save the changes there. Now, I actually feel like they are actively tweaking these features as I make this video, because the first time I came in to check out this particular process, you had the option when you selected a song, uh, there was a little... Bar over here that actually allowed you to favor either the voice in the video or the music. It didn't work very well, so maybe they were just trying it and realized it had a bug and they removed it. So you might see that come back. I'm not sure what the situation is there, but uh, basically the way that worked, it was a scrolling bar where you could basically, um, if you just wanted to add background music, for example, you could adjust the bar to favor the uh, the audio, the original audio, so you could just hear the music in the background. Otherwise, you could favor the music to kind of drown out whatever was going on in the video, especially in a situation where you were trying to uh, replace a copyrighted section. So that seems to be gone right now. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's going to change based on the length of the addition, but uh, pretty simple here, pretty straightforward to add a particular clip. You just size it the way you want to, put it in the timeline where you want it, and then click Save Changes to uh, add that particular uh, feature to your video. All right, so the next functionality that I want to show you is adding end screens. They have uh, moved the end screen addition into the actual editor. Um, I guess they felt that that was the more uh, reasonable place to put it here. Uh, so we're going to take a look at it. That's what this little box is here. You'll see it says end screens. Uh, we have three dots that give us options. We can apply a template or delete all elements. And then we can expand this and you have this little option to add element. This video can only contain up to four elements. Elements can be changed. So in this case, we already have the elements. Uh, and we have the option to delete all elements or apply a template. And because this particular video already has 
four elements, it won't let me actually uh, remove them. But you can see, because it has the elements, it shows you the full timeline here, and then you can see at the end of the video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom up, and uh, this little feature over here, you can click on it, it just zooms in on the actual uh, time frame in your video. Uh, so we wanna take a look towards the end of the video. And here we go, these are our our end screen elements, and we'll take a look at exactly how you uh, look at those and adjust those. Uh, so it shows you the four that you have. If you click on one, you're gonna get this option up here in the upper left-hand corner. You can see that it's set to the most recent upload. You can change it to best reviewer, or you can choose a specific video. This is standard. This is the same way that the end screens options looked uh, in the classic version, uh, the Creator Studio Classic. So not a lot has changed here, just the way you actually add them. So just for the sake of this, if we come in here and we grab the, the link element and we delete it, you'll see that it removed it. Now I have the ability, the element is clicked, or is now uh, blue and we can click on that and we can do add video, add playlist, channel and link. If we choose to add a link, I can link it to my website and send people over to the free one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching session that I'm giving away at creatorfundamentals.com slash register. Whoops, if I can spell it right. And uh, uh, I spelled my own website wrong. So we add that because it's approved site um, and it's my site that I've registered with my YouTube channel. It says approve down here and it allows me to create that and then I can click apply and that now gives me the link down here. All right, so the next feature they added, uh, which is kind of an interesting one, out of all the features I was uh, interested in seeing them add, I can't say that this one was at the top of the list, but I certainly see that there is a lot of value in this feature when you consider uh, weighing the uh, need to either take a video down or be able to adjust the video and leave it up uh, without losing the video. And that's the ability to add a blur. So if you run into a situation where maybe there's somebody in your video that, that shouldn't be or didn't provide their permission or you decide that you don't want to identify that person in the video, they've added this feature to be able to blur a face. Uh, as you can see here, when you click on that, it brings you to this screen. Um, Blur faces of people who appear in the video. Edit. You have the opportunity here. Uh, it's going to actually take a look and process. Uh, feel free to explore YouTube. In the meantime, processing will continue in the background. So this is going to run through that process. I'm not going to uh, uh, let it run its course here. But uh, it's going to identify the faces and blur them for you. And then you have the option uh, to save here. You also have custom blurring if you need to blur something other than uh, the person's face. So if you have something that appears in the video that you don't want to be in the video, maybe you accidentally shared some personal information, a phone number, or an address, a street address, something like that, you can use this custom feature and identify how long you need to blur it, and it's actually going to uh, blur that for you. So. Uh, really helpful tool, especially when we look at uh, trying to keep our videos up when they contain something that we need to address or we don't want everybody to see rather than having to delete the video and lose uh, whatever traffic that it had generated. Uh, we can leave it up and just come in here and make these changes. So uh, we're going to X out of that and because uh, we don't want to have any, uh, any of that stuff going on. Are you sure you want to revert all video edits? Uh, save there. We're going to X that out and bring us back to the editing screen. All right, so the next feature they added was the ability to add a card down here. It's the little circle with the uh, I in it for information, presumably, and then you can click on add card, and that's again going to bring you to a screen that allows you to add cards. And this is basically just embedding the previous version of adding cards uh, into the new editor. So this is gonna seem very familiar to you. Again, if you wanna add a card at a particular section in your timeline, you can do create, you can select a video, create card, 
and it'll put it wherever your wherever your cursor was. So if you um, want to scatter some cards throughout your video, otherwise one of the tips you can use where on where and when to add cards is after your videos run a little while, you can take a look at where people start to drop off of your video and then add uh, one of these cards to an interesting or related video uh, right around that time frame in your video. So uh, if they do decide to bail on a given video, you can try to direct them to other content that you have. So that can be powerful for you. But this is basically the old way of adding cards that they've just embedded into the process for now. And again, you can, like I said, when you do videos or playlists, you can click on playlists here and select one or uploads and select one. Uh, if it's not a recent video that you're trying to link, because this does not show you every single video, you can go open another browser, grab the actual URL of your video, and throw it in there to create uh, that particular card. And again, this is very similar. You have the you can do links to approve links. This is just like your end screens. Uh, if you want to feature another channel, if you want to identify a not for profit uh, donation link, you can put all those in there and also even include a poll uh, that uh, provides feedback or allows people to provide feedback uh, to a poll question right within your video. And of course, we see uh, down here. On mine because I have TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy offers uh, a variety of templates that you can use in YouTube, including uh, card templates and end screen templates and stuff. So if you haven't uh, tried out TubeBuddy yet, definitely give it a try at trytubebuddy.today. I also wanted to address uh, some common questions that I get, some common features that people are looking for. Uh, one big feature that people often ask about is the ability to take two different videos and add them together or add uh, separate video clips together. And unfortunately, uh, the editor, the way that it works now, does not actually provide the ability to create a video from scratch. Uh, it only allows you to take a video that's already uploaded to YouTube and uh, for the most part, remove stuff from it. You can't really add other clips to it. Like it, you can I mean you can do the blurs and you can add audio to a certain degree, um, but uh, it's not going to be that full service editor that you might find outside of YouTube. So if you are looking for an actual editor that gives you that type of functionality, there are some options out there that you can take a look at. Uh, if you're on desktop, you can do something like Filmora. If you're looking for something that's more uh, cost effective, I think it's like 60 or $70. Um, if you're looking for something that's free and you're on a Mac, it's iMovie. If you're on a Windows machine, you have a Windows Movie Maker, I believe it is. Uh, both are free options that are built in. There's a few different options on your uh, cell phones as well. Um, Kinemaster is a video editor that's pretty powerful. It does allow you to do edits for free with the Kinemaster uh, watermark on them, or you can pay a monthly fee to actually have that removed. So there are some other editors out there. Uh, this is not going to give you all of those features of trying to append different video clips together, uh, but it does allow you to kind of maintain the videos you have. It allows you to deal with any issues that might arise with videos that you've already uploaded. Uh, so it does add some value there uh, as well. So, so just one last thing I wanted to share with you guys before we end this tutorial. If you make any mistakes, uh, just keep in mind that if you X out of this without saving, you're going to be safe. None of these changes are going to be applied. Uh, you have the option to discard changes up here. So if you do have something, a change that you made and you don't want to save it, you can just click discard changes and exit out of the video. That way you also have undo and redo up here. Uh, that'll let you to move through some of the changes that you made. And we have a little shortcut here. So, uh, a little shortcut shortcut that shows you all of the different keyboard shortcuts that you can use for the editor. Uh, and it provides you with quite a good list here of the different uh, things you can do while you're working in the editor. Rewind, fast forward, nudge the video back and forth with the arrow keys and uh, zoom in and out, etc. So uh, that can get you a little bit a little bit faster in that process. But that's there. And again, like I said, if you don't want to save, just exit out of the video. Now, when you do save, you're not going to see the changes right away. YouTube's going to process the video in the background 
and it will just replace the video when it's done processing your changes. So you can come back and check every once in a while to see when it actually does get applied, uh, but you don't have to do anything else. Just click the save, it'll process the changes and it'll release them when they're ready. And hey, don't forget, this video was sponsored by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is the number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel. It's available to download for free. There's a link in the description below, or you can go to trytubebuddy.today to check it out. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'm curious what features you want added to YouTube Studio Video Editor. Be sure to let me know in the comments below. That's all the time we have for today. My name is Dan Courier, and you're watching Creator Fundamentals. Thank you.